The Michigan legislature is considering a package of bills that would expand eligibility for driver's licenses. If it's passed, anyone living in the state, including those who are living here illegally, would be able to get a license with proper proof of residency. Advocates say this issue is important for those who need identification. Plus, they believe it will also lead to fewer hit and run accidents, as they say many who flee the crash scenes do so because they do not have a license. Joining us now to discuss are the chief of police in Bingham Farms, Dan Roberts, as well as the director of the Michigan Veterans Affairs Agency, Adam Allier, who is joining us over Zoom. Thank you both of us, both of you for joining us. Uh, chief Roberts, I will start with you. you. You have come out publicly already and said you're opposed to this uh, because you think it would raise the number of fake IDs or make it easier to get a fake ID. Explain that. So it's not just me, it's the uh, Michigan Association of Chiefs of Police. We get together and we review all of the bills that uh, come into Lansing that affect law enforcement potentially. This particular bill or these, these sets of bills actually um, are very concerning, especially in a post 9-11 environment. What we found was 18 of the 19 hijackers on 9-11 had false identifications that they had, which means they use those to do credit card fraud, and a myriad of other frauds uh, in order to finance their terrorist activities while they were here in the United States. So we're very concerned as law enforcement entity trying to figure out whether these folks that come before the Secretary of State and try and get a driver's license, are they who they say they are um, just by providing some written documentation because um, these bills as written would not allow the uh, Secretary of State to in any way contact uh, the federal government to confirm who they are. Adam, let's bring you in over Zoom. What is your response to this? Why do you think this is a good thing? Well, I mean, this isn't something that's brand new in Michigan. 19 other states plus the District of Columbia have already made this shift. And they made this shift because they've seen the data that it's making people safer across their state. And what this legislation does is it takes us back to the standard that Frank Kelly had when he was the attorney general here in Michigan. And it's allowing the secretary of state and the people who know best about these things to continue to do their job and provide a license to drive, right? This isn't a passport, it is a driver's license to ensure that everyone who's on the road is operating a motor vehicle safely and they have an identification that says who they are. I think if the concern is about false IDs, law enforcement can continue to crack down on that, but this is about providing people with a high quality source of identification that is registered with the state of Michigan. So prior to 2007, um, everyone was able to get an ID in Michigan. So would this not just be a return to that? And did we see some of the fears and concerns you have expressed? Did we see that play out back then? So post 9-11, there was obviously a deep dive that was done into terrorist activity. And what they found was that uh, associations like Al-Qaeda and other terrorist network networks actually train their people through manuals and other other ways to obtain false identification and use that false identification to then commit frauds and, and fund their terrorist activities in the United States. It's actually not my view, it's a view that came out of Congress uh, through the 9-11 Commission report that is, you know, several hundred pages thick and multiple pages address this false identification problem. So it's clearly an issue that I know from my time, I spent 25 years with the FBI as an agent. Uh, I know from my time we were very concerned about that, that, uh, that individuals would be falsely obtaining identification. And you know, you talk about the Secretary of State's offices being able to vet those, that's a difficult proposition. If you have somebody that walks in your door and you just hand them a couple of maybe utility bills or some other things and say, yeah, this is who I am and this is where I live, but those are easily fabricated. Um, so you're putting a lot of pressure on the Secretary of State employees to do the right thing there and being able to vet who these people are that they say they are. And the bills do not allow, by the way, for any biometric collection, any fingerprint collection, for example. Uh, they specifically forbid that in, in these proposed legislation. So it's really challenging. It'll be a real great challenge for the Secretary of State to be able to identify that these people are who they say they are. And Adam, to go against this here, I mean, when you think about this whole plan potentially going down, how do you get someone who's here illegally to step up to the plate and get a driver's license if they don't want to be identified? I think the reason that this is coming up is because they have continued to organize and say that they do want to be identified and they do want some form of documentation so that they can do simple things like buy Sudafed. 
for their children so that they can go out on the road and get a job and do the kind of things that we expect people to do. And this isn't just people <clears throat> who have come to this country in, in different ways. It's DACA recipients. It's people who came as children. It's people who are here for a variety of reasons. And this allows them to be legal in this way as it relates to their ability to operate a motor vehicle. Right. And so I know <clears throat> the chief has said a lot about terrorism and fraud and all those kind of things, them having a legitimate document from the state does not make them more or less likely to commit some fraud. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about ensuring that people who are trying to do right by the state are able to do so. And we haven't seen higher levels of fraud or terrorism or any of those kind of things from the 19 other states that have done this. You've just seen more people driving, following the laws and doing what is important. And, and I think that's really important and a critical component component to doing this, but there are also still very different forms of identification. So Michigan has, uh, because the federal law has to have real ID compliant forms of identification. The city of Detroit has a city identification just for this issue in a number of cities and communities across the country have done so people can say and identify themselves as who they are. Now, if the chief wants to lean in and say, hey, that they need a higher level or do different things, that's one thing. But let's not pretend that this is going to make us more unsafe. This is going to make sure that people who want to drive are able to drive safely and legally. That's what this is about. So as we are quickly running out of time here, uh, Adam, I'm interested in your experience in the state legislature. Do you believe that this will have enough support? What do you think the future is of this idea? I'm hopeful, right? Like a lot of the folks who were co-sponsoring leading this were my friends in the legislature. When I was a member of the legislature, I co-sponsored uh, legislation to do this. I think this is where folks are moving as we talk about ensuring that people have access, right? A lot of farmers, you know, in rural communities really would like to see this because they hire significant populations of immigrant workers. This is an issue across the board from everybody from the city of Detroit over to the farms in Ottawa County. Like we need to be doing this. Dan, yes or no, do you think this gets passed? Uh, you know, I have no way of knowing. I'm not a politician. I, I'm, I'm in law enforcement and have been for 40 years. But I can tell you that, you know, representing the Michigan Association of Chiefs of Police, which represents every police chief in the state, we have very real concerns about the frauds that could be perpetrated um, because of these documents that are going to get out there. I mean, I think, I think Adam uh, mentioned legitimate documents. Well, it's very difficult to prove that they're legitimate in this day and age. You can fabricate documents pretty easy on the Internet. And so if somebody takes those seemingly legitimate documents to a secretary of state's office, putting a lot of pressure on a secretary of state employee to do the right thing and make sure that they identify who the person is that they say they are, especially without any sort of biometric collection like a fingerprint. Sure. All right. Well, Chief Roberts and Adam Ali, thank you so much for joining us. We will continue following this legislation as it does move through Lansing. Thank you for your time. Thank you.